In today's video, we're going to be reviving my Ludicia Discolor, which is a type of jewel orchid. This video is going to be helpful if you have an overgrown jewel orchid to repot, or if you want to know how to propagate jewel orchids, or if you just want some more care info on this plant. It only took a little over three months for this entire transformation, which is honestly kind of amazing. This is how my jewel orchid looked. It looked awful. I keep it outside so it was getting musty, crusty, and I didn't even take the time to cut off the dead flower spikes that had bloomed literally months before. So here we go, starting this video off three months ago. Hopefully by the end of this video, we're gonna have a really happy ending. There's gonna be a beautiful update where the plant is flourishing and everything has gone according to plan. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you a better visual of this plant because from this angle, you probably can't see how bad it is. This is the current state of my Ludicia <laughs> discolor and it's pretty discolored, am I right? So this was in bloom quite a while ago. So you can see the dead spikes, the flower spikes are still there. So I'm gonna need to cut those off. You can see the spider webs on here, all the dead leaves. You can see this whole entire area is bare. And if we come over to this side, you see this has pretty much fallen off. It fell off when I was moving it. And this is what was happening. It was right here. And this one is going through the same thing. It's incredibly dry right now, but there is a new growth right here coming in, if you can see that. So it definitely can recover. I'm not sure how long it will take. I feel like it won't take too long. You can see on this, it still has like a little new growth coming in. So yeah, I'm actually super confident that this whole entire thing is going to be fine. Here's the back. You can definitely see which side the sun was on. Oh, I see another new growth in there. So I think the first thing that we should do is get rid of all of the dead leaves, dead flower spikes, and clean it up in that way first. And then we can go ahead and rinse it off in the sink. Right now, my plant is very dehydrated. It's very thirsty, and I would not recommend doing this while it's in this state. Repotting a plant when it's super thirsty is not the best thing you can do. So after we get it cleaned up a little bit, we're gonna wait until tomorrow after we water it and then we can get to the repotting and propagation and everything that we need to do. So here's an overview of the plant. It kind of looks okay with this angle and we're gonna get to chopping. I'm probably gonna fast forward this because there is a lot to get off. So this piece I'm gonna be propagating separately. Um, it already came off, otherwise I would have waited until tomorrow to take it off. First, I'm going to try getting everything off just by pulling, and then if it doesn't come off from pulling, then I'm going to go in with my shears. So all the dead leaves came off pretty easily. This is our little pile, but now we just have this dusty little plant with only good leaves. I left some of the yellow wing ones on because I feel like they might perk up a little bit once they're watered. They're definitely not gonna revert back to being a dark color, but they will perk back up. And so now it's time to clean this baby up, but already it's looking so much better. Taking dead leaves off plants just makes them always look so much better no matter what. So now we're in the sink so that I can rinse off all the leaves, get all the dust and spiderwebs off that I possibly can. And I'm also using this water to water the plant. Ludicia discolors are very hardy. They're not picky with their water at all. So you don't need to use your purified or distilled water on this plant. You can just go ahead and use your sink water. I've been using my hose water for a really long time and as you can see this plant has grown so much. We got a nice hydrated plant. She's looking really good especially compared to how it came in yesterday. It's only been one day of rehabilitation so far and it's only going to keep getting better from here. This is the pot that we're working with. And I know it looks absolutely huge, but 
look at this orchid it's a lot it's much bigger pot size than this one and usually you don't want to go so much bigger in pot size but i'm gonna give it a really good soil mix i think anything is gonna be better than this honestly i also have this little propagation that i took in a separate video um, i think it propagated in water and then i potted it in a different video and it was really cute <laughs> at first but now it has gotten so lanky so i want to put this with its mom again and i'm going to use this pot for something else if you are by some chance also repotting an orchid like this at the same time as i am while you're watching this video and you don't have separate ingredients to make your own soil mix you can use a store-bought soil add some perlite and if you want to you can also add in some sphagnum moss. If you forget to water a lot like I do, then adding moss is a good idea because it holds a lot of water. So that's going to be very good for the orchid. And that's going to be a good mix for it too. But since I found this peat moss in my backyard, I want to put it to good use. Here's the bag it was in. I just found it. So yeah, I want to use that. And it's going to be the base for our soil mix we're making right now. This is obviously not a lot, so I might end up having to add in a separate soil mix but i just sprayed some water on it because it was really dry and dusty i don't think it went all the way through but yeah you can see it's like really dusty oh and it kind of splashes everywhere i'm going to be adding in some worm castings for nutrients and i'm just gonna spray it down some more because it's super dusty. I'm gonna add some more worm castings. Now I'm gonna be adding in some horticultural charcoal. And now it's time to add the perlite. And now we're adding orchid bark. It's not really small, but it's not super huge either. So I'm gonna add this in. When I add in the sphagnum moss, I'm gonna do it little by little. So I'm going to mix that part in separately because I don't want to waste any sphagnum moss because this is my good sphagnum moss. Okay, so just looking at this portion, I am going to add more perlite. And I'm going to add more orchid bark. Here's the mix before we add any moss. Now let's add some in. I'm gonna do little by little. And now we can finally start putting it into the pot. You can see this drainage hole is pretty big. So I'm just gonna fill it with moss so that soil is not gonna be falling out all the time. There we go, it's all covered. Here we go. It's pretty full already. Just starting off, there is this dying part we talked about yesterday. And I do want to cut that off before we get to any potting just to make it easier. And we're going to propagate this separately, maybe. And I do have the other piece right here that fell off yesterday. I didn't clean it or anything. What I'm seeing is we got good roots. We do have new growth points under the soil. So that's all very good. These are their little roots. They're really kind of, they're kind of stubby. They're not like very long and they're fuzzy. There are some dead roots, so we'll see. We'll split this up, but there's all that new growth. And try to work with it and arrange it in a way that it looks nice. But 
there's just so much like new growth and everything coming out but there are a bunch of dead roots as well first i'm gonna cut off the tips of the plants that have the leaves so that i can just plant those with whatever i leave left on only the extremely long stems are going to be the ones that i cut and then whatever is left of the really long stem that doesn't have any leaves on it i'm going to chop them up and then we're going to try and propagate those separately just so i don't have like really long bare tendrils coming out of my plant i want this to be a lot more compact than it was in the old pot so now we can transfer it into the pot this is all that we have left of whatever I left on and I'm gonna stick in wherever I can the parts that I cut off and I'm gonna hope that they root during the time that they're in here but with everything all combined this should come out to a really pretty looking plant so I'm really hoping they all root I'm not that confident that it will but I really hope that it does because otherwise it's just going to be a bare plant again and only the outer edges are going to have leaves coming out of them. The, the rhizomes that are underneath the soil will grow new stems, but it is going to take longer for the plant to look full. Moving on to the bare nodes, I'm going to propagate these in sphagnum moss and a lot of humidity. So I'm just chopping them up so that they can fit, placing them into these food containers that I have. I'm also putting in the stem that fell off, chopping it up, cleaning it up, putting it together. And there are some left out, but I'm going to put them in a separate container when I find one and we're going to root those as well. how long it's been but i feel like it's been like two months and you can see there is a lot a lot a lot of growth so i think i'm gonna end up cutting these so i can have a bunch of little plants the roots are sticking to the moss which is okay it should be easy to remove and there's some new growth happening here okay here are all the cuttings um i think this one has the longest root which it goes up to here. It's a little difficult to get all the sphagnum moss on because the roots are really fuzzy, so they cling onto the moss. So right here, you can see how fuzzy these little roots are. And these are roots. This is not mold. Um, some of them, you'll get roots first, and some of them, you'll get leaves first. So for these, you can see there's a stem growing. If it's not fuzzy, it's probably a stem. So you have a stem growing, and then there's no roots on here yet, but that's okay. This one I think is the biggest so far with two leaves, or actually maybe this one. There's a lot of pretty big ones, so I'm thinking of splitting them up so I can have even more cuttings. Um, ones that are established, like this for example, I'm going to split into two because I can see there's another stem growing from here. But if you want to, you can leave them intact like this and just keep this keep this part under soil. So these are getting really tall, so they're kind of difficult. I had to move them from whichever one they started out in. And I used this Panda Express bowl because it's pretty deep and I had to put a little bit of sphagnum moss because if I put a bottom layer, there wouldn't be enough space for it to grow. Some of them are slowly rotting. So for example, this one right here, you can see this one right here and some over here but it's the end so you don't need to worry as long as the node is okay some of them i can even move into soil so like this one right here i could probably move into soil um, which i think i might do this one can be moved into soil you can see this is just a whole new plant already and that is what we're looking for so i'm going to cut some of them and some of them i'm going to set aside to put into soil So I put the sprouting ones in here because they are going to get taller and I want them to be able to grow while having this closed. And 
And then I think I'm gonna put these little ones back into this container here and I keep it really wet like you can see how much water there is in here so as long as you check on it often there shouldn't be like any mold growing or anything like that at least I don't think I've had any mold throughout this time and I think they're growing really nicely it's kind of crazy how many plants you can get from just one and now instead of having four containers I only have these two and I have these of course off to the side here which are the biggest ones and i'm gonna put them into soil i'm not sure what's gonna happen here since there are roots coming off here but this is rotting so we'll see how that ends up but let me get my soil mix ready i also wanted to show you guys really quickly i put water in here but i didn't um saturate the entire sphagnum moss there's like a layer of water in here so the moss will eventually soak it up and it disperses the moisture evenly so you don't really need to worry about trying to get it even um, it'll do that itself which is why we love sphagnum moss so i'm gonna put this back under my grow light and then we can continue with the potting this time i made my potting mix out of peat moss worm castings and a bunch of perlite and that is everything that i added and i potted each cutting up in their own separate four inch pot. Just in case, I put them all in a plastic bag to keep the humidity high so that their transition from that little container to their new pot would be a lot easier. And here is how the mama plant herself looks with all of the little cuttings that I just placed in there to root in soil just freely in ambient humidity. There were a bunch of dead leaves. If you remember, there were yellowing leaves that I left on and here they are now dead. So I just removed those. Other than that, the plant is looking so much better. I also wanted to show you some close-ups of the new growth. You can see all of these new sprouts are coming out from either the long stems that I chop or they're just coming off the sides of the stems that had flower spikes on them and I kept them intact. So once you cut this flower spike off, the new growth is going to come off. It's going to make a new shoot, kind of like when you propagate a plant. So there's lots of new growth that looks amazing. Okay guys, today is going to be the final update. So first of all, I have to show you the potted up propagations, which are doing super well. Right now I have them in this little tub because they are a little bit wet from sitting in their plastic bag and i put them in a plastic bag at first and then i took them out because they don't they don't need to live in a plastic bag anymore they're they're fine they're fine to be living in the regular um humidity but i got a little bit tired of checking to see if they needed water and when you put them in the little baggie then you only need to water them like once a month for how much i water them so i just decided to put them back in a little bag but they are growing so that means they are already established in their little pots and this one has two so i'm thinking of splitting it up just for fun so there's those doing really well and then we also have this little propagation box this one is the one where i think these are the ones i cut and or they weren't growing yet so i put them in the smaller one to make more space for the bigger plants and they are all growing i think all of them have new growth coming from them some of them don't have the new growth yet but you can see where the new growth is going to come so it's it's coming it's just it just hasn't popped out yet so all of them all of them are viable all of them are growing and i don't think any of the cuttings died or failed even the ones in the big pot but anyways look at this one this is the bigger humidity container where we put all the ones that had big growth coming out there's some new growth there are a ton of fuzzies which means there's a lot of growth of roots coming out so all of them are doing fantastic. Some of them even need to be potted up because they no longer fit in here, which the whole reason why I moved it in here was because they were getting too tall for the one they were originally in. So that's very good news too. I just need to find a spot to keep all of these plants. Oh, by the way, these I've been keeping in my under my grow lights, the little propagation boxes. These potted up ones I've been keeping 
in a west facing window finally the whole entire reason i made this video was to revive this big mama which is looking fantastic some of the leaves look a little bit ugly like this one here you can see um those are the old leaves the new leaves coming in look so beautiful they have really dark coloring and it's doing so well every single propagation that i just stuck back in here is growing which honestly shocked me i did not expect them to live i kind of expected them to completely die off and that none of them would make it but all of them have established roots they're growing i'm in shock this is literally one of the most low maintenance plants that i have like look at it it's completely thriving if you remember how it looked before <laughs> look this is the new growth i'm telling you about it looks so good if you remember how it looked before it was just so bad like it kind of amazed me that it was still alive from how little i take took care of it but now she's thriving she's about to have to be potted up again <laughs> if you remember when i potted it up i stuffed some sphagnum moss in the drainage hole and so whenever i watered it the water didn't really drain out because the moss was clogging up the drainage hole so i didn't have to water it that often either i think like once every two weeks i would water it and hopefully when it gets bigger it's gonna drape nicely over the edges of this pot and i'm just hoping that it looks nice because this plant can get out of hand so quickly but that's all for today's video i hope you enjoyed watching this plant's transformation to looking gorgeous and beautiful again and a bunch of little baby versions of this plant and i hope to see you in the next video bye